Ashira training arc final episode was as epic as you can imagine. Has really finished the season on a really good note and has a perfectly set base for the Infinity Castle arc which will release in a three movie trilogy in cinemas. Although the ending has still left with some unanswered questions like how Muzan Kibutsuji can't die despite getting his head off, where exactly the entire Demon Slayer corpse has fallen, what exactly are we going to see in the future and most importantly What the hell happened to Zenitsu? Just all of a sudden, Zenitsu became dead serious after reading that note. What was in that note? So all the questions like these from the ending will be answered in this video. So let's begin. So one of the first questions from the ending was that how Muzan Kibutsuji was still alive even after his head was decapitated. So it's largely due to its extremely complex physiology. Muzan Kibutsuji has an unusual anatomy compared to other demons. He possesses seven hearts and five brains, which is unique to him. These extra organs are responsible for his incredibly powerful regenerative abilities and resistance to decapitation by nature and swords. Muzan's bizarre physiology allows him to alter his body and shape shift at will using his blood demon art of biokinesis. He can transform into a child, woman, or even a massive flesh cocoon to protect himself. The seven hearts and five brains. make it extremely difficult to kill muzan as damaging any of them severely weakens him this unusual anatomy is a result of muzan's constant experimentation and manipulation of his own body to become the perfect immortal being as the first demon he has had over a millennium to refine his abilities and become the most powerful demon in existence so even if a demon slayer slayed his head off he would regenerate it in an instant mostly because of his complex physiology So of course the question comes that how can he be killed so there is no such way discussed in the entirety of demon slayer about how to kill muzan but it has been discussed that he can be killed by the coordination of all the demon slayers meaning unity and that's it although you may see a way in the infinity castle arc and while everyone was going to battle muzan all of a sudden all the demon slayers fell somewhere where muzan trapped every demon slayer and that place seemed like an alternate reality itself and it was seen by shinazugawa and obanai in the beginning but what exactly is this place so it was the infinity castle now what is the infinity castle so infinity castle is an alternate dimension consisting of endless wooden rooms halls and moving corridors with a warp direction of gravity muzan's headquarters and the setting for the final battle between the demon slayers and demons after being beheaded by kagaya ubuyashiki Muzan traps the Hashira inside the Infinity Castle where they must battle to escape kill the upper ranks and ultimately defeat Muzan. The Infinity Castle is a key location in the final arc of Demon Slayer where the Demon Slayer corpse confronts Muzan Kibutsuji and the upper rank demons. And another question comes that how did the Demon Slayers fall in the Infinity Castle? How did it suddenly spawn there? So the Infinity Castle suddenly appeared beneath every Demon Slayer and all of them fell there due to Nakime's blood demon art. Nakime, a powerful demon who is also upper moon 4, has the ability to manipulate space and time, allowing her to teleport individuals and change the structure of the castle at will. During the final battle, Nakime used her powers to transport the demon slayers into the castle which appeared beneath them, causing them to fall into the castle's depths. And probably the most important question from the ending is what the hell happened to Zenitsu? While all the demon slayers fell in the Infinity Castle, Zenitsu entered in the Infinity Castle, having full control over his emotions. being extremely serious and focused without panicking a little and he was the most relaxed demon slayer there than everyone but how did it happen because all of this is very much opposite to zenitsu so how did our boy become a man all of a sudden so this change was sparked by a personal loss initially zenitsu was forced to become a demon slayer lacking the emotional drive that motivated others like tanjiro he often expressed a desire to quit and was known for his constant crying and fainting However, everything changed for Zenitsu when he received the tragic news of the death of his master, Jiguro Kuwajima, where he committed suicide because of a demon, Kai Gaiku. Kai Gaiku is a former demon slayer who later became a demon and joined the 12 demon moons under Muzan Kibutsuji. Kai Gaiku was originally a disciple of the former Thunder Hashira Jiguro Kuwajima, along with Zenitsu Wakatsuma. However, Kai Gaiku betrayed his master and the demon slayer corpse by surrendering to the upper rank one demon, Kogushiwo. and voluntarily becoming a demon himself after drinking muzan's blood kai gaiku quickly rose through the demon ranks and replaced daki and gyotaro as the new upper rank 6 of the 12 demon moons kai gaiku's betrayal led to the death of his master jigoro who committed seppuku which is a ritual suicide out of shame and heartbreak over kai gaiku's actions this event fueled zenitsu's rivalry with kai gaiku as zenitsu sought to avenge his beloved master jigoro as an upper rank demon kai gaiku possessed powerful demon arts that combined with his mastery of the breath of thunder fighting style making him a formidable opponent 
This personal loss ignited by a previously unseen fire within Zenil Su, the fear and insecurity that had defined him melted away, replaced by a singular focus to avenge his master and defeat the demon Kai Gaiku. This newfound purpose transformed Zenil Su from a comical coward into a surprisingly skilled and determined warrior. By the end of the series, Zenil Su had become a capable demon slayer, able to harness his full abilities in battle. His journey emphasizes how having a strong personal purpose can be a powerful catalyst for change and growth. In the epilogue said generations later, Zenitsu's descendants are shown, with his great-grandson Yoshiteru believing that all those who fell in the battle against Muzan have been reborn and are now living joyfully. This suggests Zenitsu found peace and fulfillment in the end. And this heavily suggests that Zenitsu is gonna be a literal monster for the demons in the Infinity Castle arc. And to be honest, this is the sole reason is what has set the excitement within me for the Infinity Castle arc because he has gone through significant character development and the reason behind it is so strong and painful. So for me, the main reason I'm excited for the Infinity Castle arc is Zenitsu. I just want to see this beautiful character story unfold more and see him becoming a responsible person. And if you want to know that how Nezuko got immune to the sun, then you can check out this video. I've explained everything in detail. Thank you.